Chapter 19, section 19.1, we're going to look at redox reactions, identify the oxidation and reduction part of a redox reaction, tell whether or not a reaction is in fact redox or not, and then learn how to assign oxidation states. So oxidation is the part of the reaction where electrons are lost, in which case the oxidation number will increase and become a more positive number. In reduction, electrons are gained, which causes the oxidation number to reduce and therefore become a more negative value. So here are some examples of oxidation reduction reactions. And first we have to know what the oxidation states of each element are. Iron here is an element that's all on its own. And so it's going to be considered a zero oxidation state. Zinc has a plus two oxidation state. This iron has a plus two and this zinc will be zero because it's a neutral element. So notice that iron went from zero to plus two. That's an increase in oxidation number. So we'll label this the oxidation part of the reaction. Because zinc went down from plus two to zero it reduced in value, so we'll call this the reduction part of the reaction. Because oxidation and reduction occurred, this is a redox reaction. Let's look at another example. Sodium here is neutral, so it gets a zero. Chlorine, even though it's a diatomic, it's still neutral, gets a zero. Here we know that sodium is in group one, so it's going to get a plus one charge, and chloride is a minus one, so it gets a minus one charge. Since sodium changed from zero to plus one, its oxidation state increased, which means this is the oxidation part of the reaction. Chlorine went from zero to minus one, so since the oxidation number reduced, this is the reduction part of the reaction. And so we will also state that this is a redox reaction. Okay, another example. Calcium carbonate, you can give calcium a plus two because it's in group two on the periodic table. You can give oxygen a minus two. And now we have to do a little math. Two times three is negative six. Negative six, five, four makes this a plus four. That way plus four and plus two together make a positive six. And two times three makes a negative six. And so this all cancels out. Over here we know calcium is a plus two. Oxygen is a minus two. And then here we know oxygen is a minus two. 2 times 2 is a minus 4, so the carbon must be a plus 4 to cancel that out. So notice that calcium is plus 2 before and after, that carbon is plus 4 before and after, and that oxygen is negative 2 before and after. So nothing changed, therefore this is not a redox reaction. One more example, we'll assign our oxidation states. The copper is zero, oxygen is a negative two, two times three is negative six. We know that silver is generally a plus one, and that's gonna give nitrogen a plus five, because five plus one will be six. Here, I know that because of this two, that means this was copper two. I know that oxygen is a negative two, and now I have to do a little more math. 3 times 2 gives me 6 oxygens, and 6 times 2 is a negative 12 overall. So if I take away this plus 2 from that, I have negative 10 is what value my nitrogens should have. Because there are two nitrogens, that means each one is going to have a plus 5. So plus 5 times 2 equals plus 10 plus 10 plus 2 equals plus 12, and then 3 times 2 is 6, 6 times 2 is negative 12. So plus 12 minus 12 cancel out. And then the silver has a charge of 0. 
So copper goes from zero up to plus two, which is the oxidation part of this reaction. And then my silver goes from plus one and reduces down to zero. So this is the reduction part of the reaction. So this is a redox reaction. Now we're going to look at the rules of how do I know how to label the charges or the oxidation states. First rule is when you have a lonely element it's going to get an oxidation state of zero. So if I had the reaction sodium plus chlorine yields sodium chloride, sodium here is alone so it's going to be neutral. Chlorine here is alone even though it's existing as a diatomic. But here, sodium and chloride are not alone. They are actually bonded as an ionic compound. So they do not get a charge of zero. Hydrogen is always going to be given a plus one oxidation state. So if I had HCl plus NaOH yields H2O plus NaCl, in each case here, you would give hydrogen a plus one charge. The only exception is when you have hydrogen combined with a metal. So if I did, if I saw sodium hydride, for example, this is called a metal hydride. And in this case, hydride is always given a charge of a negative one. And it's because Sodium, being in group one on the periodic table, has to have a plus one charge. It's not possible for it to be anything else. So since sodium is a plus one, it forces the hydrogen to be a minus one charge. Be careful not to confuse this with a scenario such as having a metal bicarbonate because here it's not just, this is not a metal hydride. So the sodium is a plus one, but the hydrogen here is also going to be a plus one charge. It's only when you have a metal hydride does the hydrogen get a negative one charge. Fluorine is always given a negative one charge, no matter what the scenario. So if you have HF, for example, you would give hydrogen the plus one, the fluorine a minus one. If you see OF2, another example, you have to assign the fluorine a minus one which we'll find later this causes the oxygen to be a plus two. Rule number four, oxygen is always going to be negative two and there are a few exceptions to this. So um, as an example if I had this reaction I'm going to assign the oxygen a negative two charge here However, this, because it's oxygen as a diatomic all by itself, it's going to be neutral, so it gets a zero. The two exceptions are if you have oxygen bonded to fluorine, which we just saw on the last slide. Fluorine has to be negative one. There is no other option. So to balance this, the oxygen has to be a plus two. And then if you ever have a peroxide, like H2O2, the hydrogen has to be plus one, and because there are two of them, that means the oxygen can only be a minus one since there are two of them. So anytime you have a peroxide, another example would be sodium peroxide. Here the sodium is a plus one, the oxygen is a minus one. Rule number five, if an element is in group one, two, or three on the periodic table, their charges have to be plus one, plus two, and plus three respectively. So that would be elements such as lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium all have to be a plus one. And then we have beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium all have to be a plus two. And then aluminum is always given a plus three. Rule number six, the compound has to always add up to equal zero. So, for example, if we had KClO3 yields KCl plus O2, here I know oxygen will be given a minus two charge, and I know that potassium has to be given a plus one. Now, to determine what chlorine is, we add up the charges and they should balance out. So, two times three is a negative six overall, and so negative six 
plus 1 gives me a negative 5 that needs to be balanced, so that means that the chlorine has to be plus 5. This gives me plus 6 overall, negative 6 overall. Plus 6, negative 6, add up to equal 0. Here I know the potassium has to be plus 1, so the chloride must be a minus 1 for them to cancel. And then oxygen here has to be 0 because it's all by itself, so it's neutral. And you'll notice that our changes in oxidation state are the chlorine, plus 5 to plus 1, and the oxygen, negative 2 to 0. This one is the oxidation, and this one is the reduction. If you have a polyatomic molecule, the, charges, the charge given is what your total has to add up to. For example, if I have PO4 with a minus 3 charge, your oxygen is going to be given a charge of negative 2. 2 down 4 is negative 8. Negative 8, 7, 6, 5. The phosphorus has to be plus 5. Negative 8 plus 5 equal negative 3. And that's what they have to do. Add up to equal the charge of your polyatomic ion. Another example might be if I had ammonium which has an overall charge of plus 1, the hydrogen will be plus 1. 1 times 4 is plus 4. Minus 1 gives me a 3, so that means this nitrogen has to be a negative 3 because plus 4 minus 3 adds up to equal the positive 1 charge. You want to look out when we're dealing with compounds that have a polyatomic ion. For example, if we were dealing with magnesium, nitrite. And here the parentheses are going to be a really big deal. The magnesium we know is a plus 2 charge because it's in group 2. The oxygen is going to be given a minus 2 charge. Now 2 times 2 is 4 oxygens and 4 times negative 2 gives me a negative 8 for oxygens overall. Negative 8, 7, 6, I need the nitrogen to be a positive 6 overall. However, I have two nitrogens. That means that each nitrogen is going to be a plus 3 because 3 times 2 gives me that plus 6 that I said I needed. So 6, 7, 8, we have a plus 8 overall. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is negative 8 overall. Plus 8 minus 8 equals out. And so these are the oxidation states of these elements. Now let's do some practice. Pause the video and attempt all of the oxidation states and then replay the video to see the answers. Cesium here has to be a plus one because it's in group one and oxygen we know is a minus two. Here we know that chloride generally is a minus one charge. That's all we have to really go on in this one since platinum can have more than one oxidation state. So 1 times 6 is negative 6, 5, 4. This has to be a plus 4. Calcium is plus 2, and that makes the iodide minus 1. Here, I know that fluoride has to be a minus 1. 1 times 2 means my 10 is a plus 2. I know aluminum has to be plus 3, and oxide is a minus 2. Fluoride has to be a minus 1. 1 times 3 is negative 3. So chloride has to be plus 3. Hydrogen is plus 1. Oxygen is minus 2. 2 times 3 is 6. 1 times 3 is 3. So we have a negative 6, 5, 4, 3. This arsenic must be a plus 3. 3 plus 3 equals a positive 6. Fluoride has to be a negative 1. 1 times 6 is negative 6. This means we have a negative 1 charge overall, so that means antimony is a plus 5. Oxygen is a negative 2. 2 down 2 is negative 4, so titanium is plus 4. P4 is a neutral compound, so it must be given a 0. Oxygen is negative 2. 2 down 4 is negative 8. 7, 6 gives this a plus 6. 2 down 4 is negative 8. 7. That gives manganese a plus 7. Chloride again is a minus 1. 1 times 4 is negative 4. 3, 2. The platinum must be plus 2. And then oxygen here is neutral and ozone here is neutral because they are alone. 